Hello Scatterbenchers and welcome to this new video. Today we are taking a look at our first retail Ryzen 7 1700 processor. The Ryzen 1700 processor is the least expensive processor in the Ryzen 7 lineup. The default frequency is not lower than its big brother the 1800X which we overclocked in the previous episode. The 1700 comes in at a 3000 MHz stock and will turbo to 3.7 GHz if the temperature and power headroom allows it. This processor does not have XFR enabled, so we don't see the additional 100 MHz that we see in the something X processors. Before we go into the overclocking action, I want to remind you about some aspects of Ryzen overclocking. There are three different components that will affect the performance of the processor. The Ryzen products vary in stock frequency from 3 GHz on the Ryzen 7 1700 to 3.6 GHz on the 8 core 1800X and 6 core Ryzen 5 1600X. As said, the boost frequency for the Ryzen 7 1700 is 3.7 GHz, which means you get an additional 700 MHz over the default frequency. The second aspect of performance is memory frequency. Unlike an Intel high-end desktop part, Ryzen has dual-channel memory. To increase the bandwidth will benefit from higher memory frequency. A lot of energy has been spilled on the memory overclocking capabilities of the Ryzen processors. In fact, AMD even came out with a statement regarding the subject, but what is it really about? Well, let's have a look at the article posted on overclocking.guide. The Asus RG motherboard R&D team prepared a simple document explaining the ins and outs of Ryzen overclocking. In the article, we can find a table detailing the limitations for memory overclocking. Depending on your memory configuration, the maximum dim ratio that you can use stably will vary. For example, with one stick, for each channel using single rank memory, that means only one side of the dim module is populated with ICs, ratios up to DDR4-3200 are unusable. This is what we enabled in our 1800X overclocking video. For this video, we'll be using two sticks of single rank memory for a total configuration of 32 gigabytes. In theory, that will give us DDR4-2666 ratio, but you will see that it's not always the case. The last important factor is the fabric. There is not much information available as to how the fabric works exactly, but what we do know, it connects to the CPU cores with the cache and the memory controllers. In inter terminology, you would compare this to the ring frequency, though the specific technology is different. Either way, increasing the fabric frequency will impact the performance as well. The fabric and the memory controller frequency are tied directly to the memory frequency, meaning it runs at 1066 MHz by default and up to 1600 MHz in case you choose DDR4-3200. Note that there is no automatic memory overclocking feature available such as XMP. AMD used to have the AMP program, which is sort of their approach to XMP, but seems to not be available for Ryzen. For more information, I would encourage you to read in-depth article published on websites like Anantech or PC Perspective. For the overclocking, we will be using the Asus Crosshair 6 Hero motherboard along with four sticks of G-Skill Trident Z 3400C14 memory. We will also use the Asus ROG GeForce GTX 980 Ti and the Cooler Master Neptune 280M all-in-one water cooling. The total cost for the system is about 800 US dollars. You will find the links to the hardware in the description below. As usual, we will break the overclocking in a couple of steps. First, we'll overclock the CPU, then the memory, then throw it all together and we'll finish off by pushing the reference clock up. For your information, here are the results we got on this platform at stock. Wildcruncher 1B, 1 minute and 20 seconds. X265 1080p encoding benchmark, 34.91 frames per second. Geekbench 3 single core, 4055 points. Geekbench 3 multi core, 27,575 points. Resident Evil 6 benchmark, 17,197 points. To overclock the CPU, we enter the BIOS in the Extreme Tweaker section. Under this section, we leave AI Overclock Tuner to Auto. We set the CPU core ratio to 40. Under the CPU core voltage section, lower down in the menu, we select Manual Mode and then increase the voltage to 1.35 volts. After all this, we save the settings by pressing F10 and go into the operating system. We are in the operating system after overclocking everything, so let's take a look at the performance figure. Keep in mind that we increase the CPU frequency to 4075 MHz. In Y Cruncher 1B, we have a performance increase of 24%. In HWBOT X265 1080p encoding, we have a performance increase of 23%. In Geekbench 3 Single Core, we have a performance increase of 7%. In Geekbench 3 Multi Core, we have a performance increase of 22%. In Resident Evil 6, we have a performance increase of 14%. Let's move on to memory overclocking. 
To overclock the memory, we set the memory frequency to DDR4 2400 in the BIOS. Under the DRAM timing control, we set the timings to 13 13 13 13 26. We also set the DRAM voltage to 1.35 volts. To save the settings, as usual, press F10 and reboot into the operating system. We are in the operating system after overclocking the DRAM, so let's take a look at the performance figure. Keep in mind that we increased the memory frequency to DDR4-2400. In Y-Cruncher 1B, we have a performance increase of 10%. In HWBOT X265 1080p encoding, we have a performance increase of 2%. In Geekbench 3 Single Core, we have a performance increase of 3%. In Geekbench 3 Multicore, we have a performance increase of 1%. In Resident Evil 6, we have a performance increase of 6%. So we are back in the BIOS and we enter the Extreme Tweaker section. Under this section, we change Overclock Tuner to Manual. Then we set the CPU Core Ratio to 40. Under the CPU Core Voltage section lower down in the menu, we select Manual Mode and then increase the voltage to 1.35V. Then for Memory Overclocking, we select Memory Frequency to DDR4-2400. Under the DRAM timing control, we set the timings to 13, 13, 13, 13, 26. And we also set the DRAM voltage to 1.35V. After all this, we save the settings by pressing F10 and go into the operating system. So we are back in the operating system after overclocking the CPU and also setting the memory divided to DDR4-2400. Let's take a look at the performance figures. In Y-Cruncher 1B, we have a performance increase of 29%. In HWBOT X265 1080p encoding, we have a performance increase of 26%. In Geekbench 3 Single Core, we have a performance increase of 9%. In Geekbench 3 Multicore, we have a performance increase of 23%. In Resident Evil 6, we have a performance increase of 20%. Final step now, let's push the reference clock. So we are back in the BIOS now to overclock even further. We enter the Extreme Tweaker section and this time we set AI Overclock Tuner to Manual. Then we set the CPU Core Ratio to 40. We set the BCLK Reference Clock to 125 MHz. We are also setting the Memory Frequency to DDR4-2400 and under the DRAM Timing Control we set the timings to 13 13 13 13 26. Set the CPU Core Voltage to Manual and also adjust it to 1.35V. Adjust the CPU SOC voltage to manual and set this one to 1.20 volts. We also set the DRAM voltage to 1.35 volt. Press F10 to save your settings and reboot into the operating system. Alright, so we are back in the operating system after overclocking everything, so let's take a look at the performance figure. In Y-Cruncher 1B, we have a performance increase of 35%. In HWBOT X265 1080p encoding, we have a performance increase of 28%. In Geekbench 3 Single Core, we have a performance increase of 12%. In Geekbench 3 Multicore, we have a performance increase of 28%. In Resident Evil 6, we have a performance increase of 26%. Not bad. Before I send you off to your own overclocking adventures, a couple of words on Ryzen overclocking. In our previous video, we mentioned that the temperature of the Ryzen 7 1800X was very high and made the process throttle. Recently, AMD has come out with a statement indicating that the temperature readings from the software may not be accurate on certain processors. The 1700X and 1800X carry a 20 degree centigrade offset between the reported CPU temperature and actual CPU temperature. This offset is supposed to help maintain a consistent fan policy across the AM4 products. Over time, software will be better tuned to understand the offset and report more accurate temperatures. On the topic of memory overclocking, I want to stress out once more that this is currently still changing due to the lack of DRAM ratios and sub-timings available for tuning. From sources inside the hardware industry, we are getting information that more timings will become available shortly and also possibly additional DRAM ratios. We certainly hope that this is true because higher memory frequency is certainly helping with performance and of course, we just want higher clocks. For more information on overclocking Ryzen, I will certainly refer you to the thread on the HWBOT forums. There are also tons of great overclocking videos on YouTube already, so browse around. All things considered, the Ryzen 7 1700 is a pretty sweet processor for the overclockers. With the right cooling and a bit of luck, you can increase the frequency from 3000 MHz base to 4000 MHz overclock and gain up to 35% higher performance. Unlike the 1800X, you should be able to get an overclock that has all cores running above the maximum turbo frequency. That means there is no compromise for single-threaded or multi-threaded performance gains. 
that was it for this video guys if you have any questions or remarks let us know in the comments below also tell us about your own overclocking experience on ryzen if you want to see more content with this uh, family of processors give us a thumbs up if you don't give us a thumbs down we'll just do something else thanks for watching and until the next time